We're beginning chapter 2 in trigonometry. This is lesson 2.1, trigonometric functions of acute angles. And so far, when we've been doing problems like this, or problems in chapter 1, we had a triangle like that. <clears throat> and we had an x, y, and an r as the three sides of a triangle. And we had mentioned that this triangle right here, or this angle right here, was going to be in 90 degrees. Notice there is a C here. When you have an A, B, and a C triangle, C is always a 90 degree angle. And um, we're going to make a little bit of a change here. Not really a change, but in addition to it, just another way to label these triangles here. In fact, this next uh, lesson in Chapter 2, we're going to just talk about triangles. So we're not going to be talking much about the x-y axis. So keep this drawing in mind, knowing that this is the x, and this is the y, and this is the radius of a unit circle. And uh, in a unit circle, this would be 1. And we'll just kind of put this one on hold for a little bit and go from uh, add some different stuff to this. So really, I guess what I'm going to say here is that in the past, um, <clears throat> you've had the sine of theta, and this is your theta right here, equals y over r cosine of theta equals x over r and the tangent of theta equals y over x. And that is still true, but we're also going to, and I had mentioned this before, remember the old Indian name that I gave you? Soka Toa, I don't remember which lesson in chapter 1 it was. But sine equals the opposite over hypotenuse, which is what we have here. y is opposite, it's across from our um, theta, and r is the hypotenuse. So this is also equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine of theta, and we'll just leave this theta, just so you remember what it is. Cosine of theta is x over r, or what we're going to use is right here, adjacent over hypotenuse. So notice this line right here that we call x is attached to or next to theta. So this one's across from it, this one's opposite, this one's adjacent to theta or angle A. If we are looking at this angle, this side over here would be across from it or opposite, and this side would be adjacent. The adjacent side always touches the vertex of the point that you're looking at or the angle that you're talking about. R is going to be our hypotenuse. We're going to start calling that H for hypotenuse. So it's R and H. So our tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent there. <clears throat> so everything's the same. We're just going to start using um, this right here in addition to this here to express the different sides of the triangle. So, if we have a triangle such as the one on uh, bottom of page 46, and it gives us, now let me draw the triangle down here, right triangle, and I say that is 7, that's 24, and this is 25. Oh, and let me say this too before we get too far ahead. The uh, rest of the trig functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, um, cosecant is the reciprocal, so it's just H over O. Um, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, it's going to be H over A, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tan, and it's going to be X over Y. So I didn't put those on there, but they're the exact same. Just flip them over, and you've got your cosecant, secant, and cotangent that are reciprocals of those. Another thing I want to bring up, notice this right angle here. What we're doing right now only has to do with right triangles, which means one of the angles is 90, and it means the other two angles, because you know that you add up all the sides of a triangle, you get 180. Well, if this is 90, that means we have 90 left. So that means this angle right here and this angle right here added together are going to give you 90 all the time. All right, so let's look at this, and we're looking at the sine of, and let's call this A, 
B and C, and again C all is always the right triangle or the right angle. And we're trying to find the sine of A. The sine of A is going to be the sine of this angle right here. Sine of A, according to what we've got up there, is opposite over hypotenuse. The line opposite A is 7, and then the hypotenuse is which one? Well, it's always, always, always the longest one, and it's always, always, always across from the right angle. So it's going to be 7 over 25. Cosine of A will be adjacent over hypotenuse, and the adjacent one is 24, and it's going to be over 25. If I took the sine of B, and let's get a different color here. Let's say I'm looking for the sine of B. The sine of B is going to, again, be opposite over hypotenuse, and the opposite is going to be this one right here, 24. It's across from B. And my hypotenuse will be the same regardless of whether I'm finding the sine of A or the sine of B or whatever. The hypotenuse is always the longest one, and again, it's 25. If I wanted to find the, well, let's find the tangent of B. Tangent of B is going to be opposite, which we already determined was 24, over the adjacent, which in this case is 7. It's the one that's connected to B. Okay, So that is uh, an example of um, the first example on the bottom of page 46 for 2.1.